still cranked on. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the check engine light went away. <laughs> oh, this is a general reaction. This is just happened. I... <laughs> well, hello, everybody. I don't know if you know who I am, but uh, I collect Hondas, and I used to have a long beard, and sometimes I go to uh, races that are in the woods. But hey, I missed you guys. Uh, man, life has been rough to me, if you can't tell by the shagginess and the grossness of myself but uh man we've we've been off for a little bit trying to get some stuff done in life and trying to get kind of settled but uh that's for another video right now you guys already know i did some spoilers on instagram did some spoilers on facebook so if you've been following any of that you already know what i'm looking at here and plus i'm sure the thumbnail has some kind of oh guess what kind of car i got you guys know what kind of car i got i got a wagon another one this beautiful beautiful gem i found Whew, man i was so lucky to get this thing i i so the story so i found this one it was on facebook on a random group called like men's trade shop or something like that uh just a random arkansas for sale group but anyway i it wasn't listed I'll, I'll post a picture here for my phone the screenshot of the listing and as you can see, it says Civic Wagon up front, but there's no, of course, picture of it because that would have probably triggered somebody immediately. This thing was posted for six minutes. Complete whim that I joined this group. I just joined the group. I saw 88 Civic Wagon and a bunch of other stuff for sale. And I, I, I missed them immediately. Oh, God. Oh, God. I got to go. I started hyperventilating. And I was actually on the way to Oregon Trail Rally in the back of the uh, Rally Ready truck. So I was unable to get it. I just I physically could not be there to get it. So my good, good friend, Mike King, uh, was able to go pick it up for me and hang on to it while I was away. And eventually I was able to go secure it, which today I went and finally secured it. So I went to shop, hanging out, hidden behind some stuff. But this, this thing is a cream puff. I'm really, really excited about this. So this is a 1988 Honda Civic Wagon. But if you guys are watching this, you guys know what it is. If you know the story, uh, wagon guys will know, Honda guys will know, these things are being parted out at an alarming rate and they're just not around anymore because people pull all the all-wheel drive stuff off of them and then they promptly scrap them. As you, well, you can kind of see, there's the drive shit or the axles, rear diff, maybe we will see it. If not, just believe me, it's all there. <laughs> the guy, he didn't know what it was, he just was going to turn it into a side-by-side. -side. He's literally going to just chop it all up and make it a big side by side kind of lost interest in it and uh put it up for sale and it was sitting under a shed as you saw in the picture the only problem he said was i don't know what we, he had some kind of not no start issue but everything's there but as you see the interior yeah so he let a dog loose i want to say dog loose for some reason he decided to keep a dog inside here locked up i don't know if it's a punishment or he's just a bad person but uh yeah, the dog took it out on the wagon. So the seats are ruined, front and back. Uh, headliners tore up. The dash and all the, this is good. So that makes me happy the dog didn't decide to go after the knob. That's a really clean shift knob, by the way. So yeah, no, it's all tore out. Uh, the other problem is that glass over there is broke out. Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker, obviously. It is probably gonna be pretty hard to find because, you know, they're not, exactly like super common in junkyards and everywhere else i can find that though uh let's open it up so you can see the key cylinder is gone i guess i imagine they misplaced the key because i have a title for it it's a clean title so that's really nice but they drilled out the, the key cylinder which if any honda thieves are watching they know you can just start it with a screwdriver now which is kind of dumb but this is a factory AC car. <laughs> it's got AC, it's got power steering, and the craziest thing of all, and I, these caps are still here, so this still leads me to believe this has not ever been rolled back. But can you see that number? 109,000 miles, and that's it. <laughs> this is my new low mileage Civic Wagon, and I, I I can't believe that. I cannot believe this thing only has 109,000. I mean, I can. Uh, the tags were valid through 2013. So they're really, I mean, it came out the road what, eight years ago at this point. 
man, that is super low miles. And this is super low gear. But yeah, no, the interior has never been apart. Like all the screws are all there. Uh, most of the normal stuff that gets yanked off and thrown out is all there. All the panels are here. We'll change things here. It was just driven. It was just, just driven. That was all. It was never modified. No one ever had this as a tuner and tried to put like gauges on there, low short sport shifter. Not not calling anybody out, but it's never, it's never been modified. This is just a good old Civic wagon that someone had, and they just took care of it and just drove it. And they didn't drive it much. Let's see if I can get the hood unlatched. It's gonna take a second. If you pull, you can get a hold of this cable here and pull that good knife, good enough. You can actually undo the hood. Oh, tech tip for you. And here you go. This is the D16A6, all the original motor. Has the uh, factory skid plate on the uh, transmission still there. It leads me to believe none of this has ever been taken apart. It looks like they tried to take some of this apart in order to get started. Like I said, I think it has a no start condition. Uh, I don't know what they were doing here. There's like house connectors and I think they're trying to jump start is what they're trying to do. The resistor pack is that unplugged? I have the resistor pack unplugged here. I don't know what in the world they're planning on doing here. Oh no, they got a different resistor pack. Just here. I don't know. Anyway. They were trying some, some engineering. They put a brand new uh, distributor in here. Why, I don't know. Usually these reman distributors are junk, so... I'll keep my eyes out on that. New... New terminal. It looks like this is what he was trying to do. Is he's trying to get it running so that he could cut it up and destroy it and not feel bad about it. But what's cool, factory AC. All lines are there. Uh, not too burnt, not too crisp. Still has the uh, temp sensor there. Factory power steering car. Even better. And it looks like... Yeah, it's pretty dry. Well, whatever. Reservoir still there. It still has the sticker too. Or this little cladding, which is never there. Let me check the oil yet. It is filled with clean oil. So that is a plus. I haven't cracked any of this open. This is the first time I'm looking at any of this. It smells good. See oil in there. Positive, positive. <laughs> no slushy. I don't see coolant, but it's wet in there, so that's good. And we'll uh, check all that later. The factory air box. Oh, they were, so they just took that off and we're working on it, trying to, I bet they're probably spraying ether in there trying to get the start. That's my professional CSI on that. The cluster here. I wonder if the main relay is the culprit in this one. The fuses all look pretty good. They're really clean under there actually. It's just dusty from what I can tell. I bet with a good wash and clean up and detail this thing would be minty. The uh, timing belt, looks, first glance looks pretty good. I don't see any cracks or anything. Has the uh, AC belt, or steering belt all in there. All looks good. All these lines are pliable. I was worried about those being crisp. They don't feel dry or anything like that. Cause it just looks dirty. It just looks like it's just been sitting outside. The, fact, the clutch cable is still ran in the factory factory root. Look at that. It's got the brackets still there. Oh, that's so good. Oh, the more I dig into this, the more excited I am. The headlight buckets. This one looks a little loose. Usually that means, yeah, that, that set screw fell out of the back of that. No problem. Yeah, that one's got the set screw in there to hold it good and tight. Lights are uncracked. Real glass. Oh, da, 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 Stanley. Yep, Stanley and Stanley. So those are factory. Of course the corners are broke those are hard to find it looks like it looks like this pushed into something here like it rolled maybe into something or someone backed into it pretty easy fix it's just the the metals here bent out this fender mounts to this tab so it just pulls out that's all the all four of these that's cool that's the factory 13. <laughs> that's really neat to see so the fender liner is out of the side it's got the factory cap on the ball joint there. This thing has never been freaking touched, ever. <laughs> as far as like major dents, there's not a whole lot. There's one little rust bubble right there. 
I don't know how that dent happened without messing that up, but anyway, that little dent there. Usually the usual suspect rust is right here. And there's no bubbles, no nothing. I see all the glass is broke out of there. But I don't see any rust of any kind here. The only other spot, there's a little bit of bubble there. Just barely. Back hatch is good. A little bit of clear coming up there, but that's definitely not a problem. This is the bubble that's all. And that's not bad at all. You can actually probably take that off the surface and not have any issue out of that. These are good and clean. There's one tiny crack here. Well, not tiny, it's size, sizable. Gas oil's cold. I don't see any markings of having a roof rack at any time, but it's not dented. No dents along the side. And this is pretty amazing. You never see a driver's side fender that's not completely caved in. There's a few small dents, but overall that's a like an eight out of ten fender. Looks like the clear maybe bubbled. I'm just gonna sun baked or something. Anyway, I'm gonna start diving into this thing and kind of a uh, look around, see if we can get uh, figured out here. Maybe try to get it started. Whew. Man, I have been doing a deep dive. As you can see, the sun's already kind of gone down on me. I have been just kind of tearing through this thing, just kind of figuring out what is what and what is not what. So I had to replace one fuse and I've got power. So that's good. Clock's on now. That's also good. It wasn't on earlier. Uh, I've got the battery charger going on now. As you can see, I've kind of got my key here because they decided to drill that out. Uh, let's go turn this off. Click that back. Key out. There we go. Keys out. I don't really want to show that because I hate the fact they didn't do that to a car. But anyway, <clears throat> I was digging through here, just seeing what's all in the back seat. And I've lit the lid here and some more CSI. Look how nice that carpet is. Wow. Oh, it's fresh. Anyway, enough of that. I was doing some more CSI work. <clears throat> And if you see here, I don't know what they're doing. They had taken the fuel pump power and ground off and ran one long cable. It looked like a power cable. Maybe they're trying to make a, a manual fuel pump on, which that believe, leads me to believe my original theory about this car, why I won't start. And if you know anything about 88 to 91 Civics or any early 90 Civics, you know, about this. So, this is the main relay. Now this thing, uh, the reason I know they hadn't looked at this because it's dusty and it was still bolted up and all the bolts are still there, which the bolts are hard to put in. So if you have this in there and the bolts are there, it's never been taken out. You're not gonna put it back that well. And like I said, most of this car, you can tell, has not been opened up except for what they're trying to figure out and diagnose. diagnose. So that kind of leads me to believe that they didn't think or they didn't know about this. So these things are uh, notorious for getting hot and just coming apart. And if this car was set out in the sun or just, I think even just generally, they can just get hot and the solders can come apart. I do have a known good one. It's in my other red wagon. It's parked back there. So if I can get this thing to turn over once, just to kind of let me know, hey, everything else is good, then I'll go ahead and put a known good main relay on here and see if I can get the start because I, I'll show you what they're gonna put I have no idea what's going on here <clears throat> for some reason they're trying to bypass maybe that's the fuel I do not know I don't know why they're trying to... so they have an extra uh, resistor pack here so that's leading me to believe they weren't getting fuel and that's why they're trying to do that manual fuel pump switch thing. Because this resistor pack is just unplugged. And resistor packs, I've never had a problem out of them. I don't know a lot of people that have problem out of resistor packs. So I don't know why they'd go after that, thinking that was the issue. Unless they're trying to manually wire up. Maybe. Maybe that's it. And as you can see, they also put a new distributor on here. And I don't know. It was probably turning over. 
this is like a whole CSI thing. It's probably turning over when they're putting ether in here, but they weren't getting fuel. And they couldn't figure out why they didn't fuel, so they put a new fuel pump in here and we're attempting to wire up a look here. Here's the old fuel pump. And what that makes me think is they they're trying to make a manual switch so they knew for sure there was power going to it. I don't know. And then they got a couple self-tappers here and I have, I have no idea what those are there for. <clears throat> That's the old boot that went over that. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this back up the way it was and let the battery charge just a little bit more and see if we can get it to crank over once. And if it's cranking over and just not getting fuel, then I'll immediately go to the main relay and try that. Fingers crossed, guys. Timing might be up. I got my foot flat to the floor right now. So I've got it idling, but my foot is just barely, I mean, probably 10% on the throttle. If I take it off, it starts sputtering out. But if I put it in gear, let it clutch a little bit. I'm trying to let it get a little bit of temperature into it. I put a little bit of fresh gas in it too. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of. The only thing I've really done is just re unengineer what they did to the fuel pump in the the uh, resistor box. I don't know what that was about. It sounds really healthy though. So I am going to sit here and let it idle for just a hair longer. Idling about a little over 500. Foot is completely off the uh, throttle now. It's idling by itself now. It seems to have a fuel cut if I give it any kind of gas at all. No weird smells, no oh, crazy. Look at, I took this oh, cover off, the tiny little belt looks brand spanking new. This fresh RTV here, like the RTV did. It looks like they redid the uh, valve the basket too. But you can tell it was leaking at one time, so I guess they went ahead and replaced that. But, Okay, it's working if I get a throttle there. <laughs> oh, come on, please. I don't know why I wouldn't if I get a throttle here. Oh. <laughs> there is no way this is going to work. <laughs> I swear, this thing drives. What? <laughs> it drives so well, dude. It needs some steer power steering fluid. But... Oh, uh oh. <laughs> it doesn't think there's a key in there. Oh, that's a bit dangerous. Hang on. <laughs> so I'm having to hold the key thing down, keep the uh, steering lock from locking. <laughs> crazy video but I would just <laughs> turn it in the wheel lock. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's working just fine. <laughs> oh this is, this is genuine excitement. <laughs> it's running and driving just fine. I don't know what they were doing with it but it's perfect. The power of the clutch everything feels perfect on this stupid thing. <laughs> oh this is a general reaction. This just happened. I, I don't know what kind of 
it, it works. I fix. I fix. I fix. Video's over. Whew. Well, that was an emotional roller coaster really fast. Like I did not expect this at all. I was just kind of expecting today to kind of just go over it, check everything out, make sure, kind of see what I was getting into. But uh, wow, <laughs> this thing is nice. It's needs a good fucking deep clean for everything. But besides that, man. Oh man, that almost looks like a new crack. One little crack there. The rest of the windshield's great. There's a frog in here too. Sorry, frog. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Uh, I may go to the junkyard tomorrow if I have some time. See if I can't just find a pair of front seats. Uh, yeah. Besides that, guys, you'll be seeing a little bit more of this. I know I always say that. But uh, once I start getting more stable and kind of back on my uh, back planted, then I definitely will have a, a lot of great content. This being one of them. So, till next time, guys. Peace. Had the starter still cranked on. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the check engine light went away. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can't, you can't script that, folks. All right, for real this time. <laughs>